Welcome back to the channel. This is Gillis TV here today, folks, and thank you guys so much for tuning in. As we got some more MLB news slash rumors going on with winter meetings only starting next. Actually, it's this week, I believe, the 4th. There's going to be a lot of news coming out here soon. And if you're into that, make sure you hit that subscribe button as we got the news, rumors, all that fun stuff, plus NHL and whatever you guys want to see. Leave that in the comments and let's try getting 20 likes on this video. Now, like I said, it's the off season. Things are going wild. Earlier, I did a judge video. Just finished doing two more videos. so it will be out soon. Now I got this one, so my voice might not sound the greatest. But let's get to this where it says, the Athletics' Peter Gammon cites front office officials from three other teams who are on belief that Bogarts will not return to Boston, as he did regard to Bogarts playing another position. However, Boras outwardly denied the reports that Bogarts is open to any and all voices in the free agent market and adding that he and Bogarts have not closed any doors to anyone. So... The two teams on your screen right now, Padres, Diamondbacks, are interested in Xander Bogarts. And, you know, I did a Trey Turner video. Go check that out. They are interested, but they want to do Trey Turner for the Phillies anyway, are interested in Xander Bogarts if they can't get Trey Turner. Bogarts is part of a loaded shortstop class, and a number of teams have checked in with his representatives at the Coros Corporation. Jeff Basson of ESPN reports the Diamondbacks and Cubs have expressed interest while adding that previously reports suitors like the Phillies and Dodgers are in the mix. Meanwhile, Ken Rosenthal of the Athletics reports Padres president of baseball operations AJ Preller recently checked in with Scott Boris about Bogart's willingness to play a position other than shortstop. Boris, however, flatly rejected the possibility that the agent tells Rosenthal Xander is playing shortstop and denied that San Diego would prefer to move him off that position. San Diego is still interested in Bogarts, isn't a new development. Marine Pepin listed the Padres as the suitors last week, while John Heyman of the New York Post has suggested they're involved in the top of the shortstop market more generally, that Frayers are seemingly serious enough in their pursuit gauge of Bogarts. The infield mix at Petro Park already crowded, although there are a number of multiple position options who can move around. Manny Machado is locked in at third base, while the rest of the current infielders, infield figures to be made up of some combination if they were to get Bogarts. Fernando Tatis Jr., Kim, and Jake Kronzwerk. Kim has proven himself as an excellent defensive shortstop and earned an everyday role with a 251 showing this past season. Tatis was excellent to be franchise start shortstop after a brilliant start to his career, earned him a $340 million extension, but he's now under consideration for a move to second base or the outfielder after missing all of 2022 due to injury and performance-enhancing drug ban. Cronsworth is a quality defender at the Keystone, but has floated. But they have floated the possibility of kicking him over to first base with Josh Bell and Brandon Jury hitting free agency. Adding a first base slash designated hitter might be the most straightforward path to building out the offense, but there's no harm for Preller and his staff in considering other avenues. Adding another middle infielder while kicking Cronsworth to first base would give San Diego an elite defensive infield, while Bogart's among the top offensive players available regardless of position. He's a long been mentioned as a candidate to move off shortstop towards the end of the free agent deal after years of subpar defensive marks, but he quieted those concerns at least in the short term with arguably the best season of his career with the glove. Bogart's rated as four runs above average in more than 1,200 shortstop innings by both defensive runs saved and stat cast this past season. He hasn't played anywhere else since 2014 and while there's little question he could handle a less demanding position, 
like second or third, it doesn't seem he's willing to do so. There are a number of other teams with worse internal options than the Padres that surely be willing to plug Bogarts in at a long-time position. The Diamondbacks relied on rookie Gerardo Perdomo this year, and he looked overmatched to the tune of a 195 average in 500 plate appearance appearances. Nick Ahmed is under contract and can play excellent defense, but he's always been below average hitter and lost almost all of this past season to due to surgery on his throwing shoulder. Arizona general manager Mike Hazen is plenty familiar with Bogarts from his previous work in the Red Sox office, so it's little surprise they're interested in adding him given the uncertain shortstop outlook. The question is whether a Diamondbacks team that has a payroll south of $100 million in each of the past two seasons would be willing to commit to a deal of this magnitude. MLBTR projects a seven-year, $189 million contract for Bogarts. The D-backs already have roughly $98 million in salary commitments for next season per roster research, so adding a salary in the realm of $27 million annually would require owner Ken Kendrick signing off on a major spending hike relative to recent levels. So, like I said, Bogarts is not on the idea of going to another base, another position. He wants to play shortstop. For me, if I'm the Padres, I kick Cronsworth to first base, I move Kim to second, put Bogarts there, Tatis can play the outfield. Tatis can also play second base here and there as well. That would shore up your infield right there. Now for the Diamondbacks, it's all about the money perspective for these lower marketed teams. I'm not saying the Diamondbacks are like, you know, a really bad team. It's just do the revenue and all that. They have a hard time signing big name players. But at the same time, this would help with their demand at shortstop. They are in the need of a shortstop. They're not. They're probably not going to get Turner Correa wants to go to a winning team. Bogarts or Dansby Swanson would be the perfect mix for the Arizona Diamondbacks. But as well, you know, everyone else is in there. But they want him. Both teams want him. They can work around it. They can make the money work. And I'll be happy to see what happens you know, from December 4th to 7th with the winter meetings that teams have with players. This is going to be an exciting time. But that is where I'm going to end you because doing four videos in the last, you know, 20 minutes or so, 40 minutes. It's taking a toll on my voice, but thank you guys so much for tuning in. This has been Gillis TV here on Clemox, and if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. We're going to try and keep you up to date on all MLB news right now news, rumors, whatever it is you guys here. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. This is Gillis TV. Have a good one.